Hi, welcome to Hardworking Trucks News and Views. I'm Tom Quimby, Senior Editor. So big news coming from Cummins, right? Right to that. So Cummins, you know, usually don't get a bunch of news concerning new engine platforms. And so big press conference this week, hosted by the giant engine manufacturing company. And so this is concerning their fuel agnostic platforms, right? So when you hear that word fuel agnostic, first thing that comes to mind is I was thinking, okay, so they got one engine, maybe that can run on a multitude of fuels. Not, not the case, right? So they are going to have, say, capability, um, these engines to run on various fuels, but it's going to be one engine. Once that engine is spec, it'll be one engine, right, running on one fuel, okay? And that'll be it. And they do not recommend switching out once you've got that engine to any other fuel, okay? So fuel agnostic, um, you know, in the sense here that they've got their base engine, uh, which will start with the 6.7 liter, um, that is going to be the same from the head gasket down, okay? So of course that lowers the cost, right? And you've got this new modularity approach, which oftentimes you hear that in the EV space, um, it does keep the cost down, right? And you've got just that base engine head gasket down is the same, okay? So you don't have to go scrambling around with all the different parts, right? And I'm trying to simplify this um, process if fleets want to go ahead and go the route of a low carbon fuel like renewable natural gas, for instance, or biopropane, renewable diesel, biodiesel. Um, there's a growing list. So you want to make that switch as painless as possible, right? And keep the cost down. And so the complexity, they're trying to pull that out, right? But keeping these base engines the same. And again, you know, the build from the head gasket up, that's going to dictate, you know, what kind of engine this is, you know, what fuel it's running on, if it's, you know, natural gas, right? Uh, gasoline, right? Uh, propane, et cetera. So the big deal, right? Um, 2024, that's gonna be their first fuel agnostic engine in this case, it's gonna be the gasoline, that's right, gasoline, 6.7 liter, which they say is going to have diesel-like performance and durability. They see this going right into the pickup segment. And of course, you, know, you can see it you know, in other uh, work truck uh, uh, spaces, right? Vans, et cetera. So this chassis cab, this is pretty exciting stuff. Okay, so that'll be 2024, the 6.7 liter gasoline. Then next comes a 15 liter natural gas, or you can put it on renewable natural gas, right? Which very low carbon, that is actually a carbon negative fuel. We've done a lot of stories on that at Hardworking Trucks. You can check out the uh, website for more information on that. And so, um, yeah, the big push here, right, is to transition fleets slowly but surely to zero emissions. And, you know, Cummins has said, look, it's going to be a long process. It's going to take years to get there. Okay, and they're talking about 40 years, right, uh, before uh, internal combustion is actually sunsetted. Okay, about 40 years. So that's obviously a long time, okay, four decades. Uh, and so now, again, this approach is to go ahead and transition fleets to these lower carbon uh, approaches and lower emissions. And they're offering, again, you've got propane, you've got natural gas, gasoline, diesel and remember you've got different types of fuels you know within that mix in other words not just natural gas you could go ahead and go with renewable natural gas not just propane but for lower carbon you can go with biopropane um, those fuels are becoming more available i've talked to sources um, usually yes typically in california incentive rich california is where a lot of those fuels are purchased because again of all those you know generous grants etc um, but, you know, distribution is starting to pick up and grow beyond the Golden State. And, uh, yeah, this is another way to go ahead and reduce that carbon footprint, right? Reduce those emissions without, you know, forking out a tremendous amount of capital that's required, say, for all electric or hydrogen fuel cell. And those are two technologies that Cummins, of course, has also been steadily working on. Okay, so you can read about that story and more, of course, at Hard Work and Trucks. And this week's newsletter, make sure you sign up for that. It comes out every Wednesday. And so we also got the story on Rivian. You've had a lot of pushback. You've got uh, Republicans there in uh, the Atlanta area. It's about 45 miles east of Atlanta where they hope to go ahead and build their new plant starting this summer. A lot of folks, you know, dead set against that now and are pushing back. George Soros has gotten into the mix and has purchased 19.8 million shares of Rivian. So you can check that story out as well. And Ram, um, 
and it looks like they're going to go ahead and have with their ram electric 1500 a range extending engine so go ahead and check that story out as well at hardworkingtrucks.com. <laughs>